Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating a coffee cup with a logo on it and we're going to apply the logo using the new 3D tools in Adobe Illustrator and we're obviously going to create the coffee cup there as well. Now I'm starting with a really small brand new document 480 by 270. It's really important that you use fairly small documents when you're using the new 3D tools because they are really processor intensive. I'm going to start with a narrow rectangle for my coffee cup shape and I'm just going to bring in this bottom corner, just select it and bring it in to make the basics of the shape. I'm going to fill it with a sort of pale grey colour and I'm going to remove the stroke from it. For the lid I'm going to create a rectangle. I'm going to create this as a separate object but obviously it's going to be lined up with the coffee cup. I'm going to choose Object Path and then Add Anchor Points. So I have a few more anchor points to work with. Let's just zoom in here so we can see where we're working. So I'm going to bring this anchor point in so I've got the edge to the coffee cup. Maybe not quite as steep as that. I'm going to bring this one in. I'm holding down the Shift key so it's moving in in a perfectly horizontal direction. Now I'm going to add some more points using the Pen tool. So I'm just going to click here because I want a couple more points here. I'll go back and select these first two anchor points, leaving this one intact, and just drag these up. So that's going to make sort of pretty much the profile of my coffee cup, but you know, if I haven't got it right, it doesn't matter. We can fix that later on. Let's just put it into place so that we have a look at how it's going to sit on the actual cup. Now these two objects we're going to group with object and then group. A lot of the options in this new 3D and materials panel in Adobe Illustrator simply won't work if you don't have your objects grouped. So if you find that you're short on options, go and group your collection of objects and things should work a lot better. I'm choosing Window and then 3D Materials just to show up this panel. We're going to Object. I've got half my coffee cup, so I'm just going to click on Revolve because I want to revolve it all the way around. But that looks spectacularly like it hasn't worked. Well, it hasn't worked because we're going from the wrong edge. So I'm just going to set this to right edge. And now we have something that looks more like a coffee cup. It might be a bit fat though, so I'm just going to bring it in a little bit. So it's a little bit taller than it is wide. You can choose a different rotation for this. I'm going to just settle with off-axis front. I think it looks better, but you can choose the rotation that you want. If you don't see the rotation options, just click on this little disclosure triangle, this disclosure pointer. Let's go to materials. While I don't want to be using materials right this very moment, I do want it to be a shiny cup. So I'm going to bring down in the base properties area my roughness. And I'll go to lighting and just see if I can sort out some sort of relatively nice lighting for my shape. Let's go and see what our ray tracing options are. I'll just click here to render my shape and then we'll just check we're on low and we're not rendering as a vector. That's just fine. So now I've got my coffee cup. I'm going to get my logo. So this is my coffee shop logo, which I downloaded from Deposit Photos. I'm not being sponsored by Deposit Photos, but I really do like their content. So I'm just going to size this down to a small size because remember the document I'm using here is really small. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it into my working document. It's coming in at a pretty good size. Now for me to be able to put this logo on this coffee cup using these 3D tools, it needs to be a symbol. So I'm opening up my symbols panel. You can of course get to yours by choosing window and then symbols. I've got my logo selected, so I'm just going to click here and add it as a symbol. And now I can just delete it because I don't need it any longer. Let's go back to our coffee cup and let's go back to our 3D and materials panel and we're going back to materials. Now we have an option of just our default, which was the one that we're using here. We have materials that are shipped with Illustrator, but we've also got graphics. And graphics in this term really is symbols. So because I've added my graphic as a symbol, it's accessible to me here. So I'm just going to click to add it to my coffee cup. I can now just drag it down to wherever I want it to be. 
And with it selected in this little panel here, I can adjust its scale. So if I want it to be a bit smaller, I can make it smaller. I can adjust its rotation, but I don't want to do that. I'm going to leave it rotated as it was. I just want to perhaps adjust its scale around my shape. So it's pretty much looking the way it should look on a coffee cup. Now, if I want to add a shadow to my cup, I can. I'm going into the lighting panel. Just make sure shadows is turned on here. I'm going to put a shadow below my object. I need to make sure that my shadow bounds are as high as they possibly can be because otherwise the shadow is going to be clipped. It's not rendering particularly well. I don't like the lighting particularly well, so I could adjust that. So let's just come up here. And let's see if we can do a bit better with our lighting. The softness here of the lighting is also going to impact the shadow. So if you want a soft shadow, then make sure that you have softness set. Now you may be noticing that this looks really, really pixelated and it is very pixelated. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to set my rendering to high. I'm also going to click here on raster settings and set my document raster settings to 300 ppi. And what that's going to do when I click render is render this at a very high resolution. It's also going to impact my computer because this requires a lot of processing speed. So if you find that when you choose this option, your Illustrator crashes or if things scream to a halt, make sure that before you use it that you've closed everything down that you don't need to have open. So you give your computer the best possible chance at rendering this pretty fast. But I've got a brand new machine, so I'm pretty hopeful that this is going to work just fine. And it did render just very quickly. I'm working on a small enough document here that I've been successful with this. So the new 3D tools in Adobe Illustrator make it really easy for you to mock up things. Well, create your own 3D objects, obviously, and also mock up your artwork onto them. Before we finish up here, I have more Illustrator training at Skillshare.com. If you sign up for Skillshare, you'll get access to thousands of classes there, including over 270 of mine. In the description below is a Skillshare coupon for you, which is at least as good as the current Skillshare offer, and typically mine will be better. I also have Illustrator training at Udemy.com, and there's a referral link for every one of my courses in the description below. Please feel free to share these with family, friends and co-workers. I hope you've enjoyed this video and learned things about Illustrator of which you were previously unaware. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.